obviously, for those that are here, you know now, Pastor Bill, I'm not him. And as you notice on by your watches, you're probably saying, oh, we're even starting early. Joe, Brother Joe could be done. Well, that's why they start. They speed things up with me. I kind of have a bad habit of being like Atlanta Airport. You want to, they want to mess you around on the taxiways a while before they actually let you take off. Then I like to, when I, once I get up, I like to fly and don't stop. They always say I have a hard time bringing this plane down. But today I will try to wrap it up in a reasonable amount of time. Hopefully we'll be done at 12.30. So, <clears throat> as, I prepared to, as I was preparing for this, I had a previous message that I had done up. Probably the one that many of you seen me take and toss back there one time when I used the message that I heard coming to church that morning. Well, I was going to bring that, bring that one with me. But this morning, as I was waiting for the shower, for the shower it was being occupied, and I was in reading my Bible and praying, and I was like, God, what would you have me to Would you have me to use this? I was praying over it. And God decided that as I was looking through, some things were burning in my heart. And I turned to a, a passage, and if you'll turn to Mark 2 with me, it's where I'm going to be talking from today. And as I was praying, I understood started understanding and seeing what I was reading this morning from a different perspective than what is actually labeled in my Bible. Some of you may have the little labels in your Bible, some may not. Mine says, Jesus heals a crippled man. This is not a message about healing. I pulled something else from it that weighed heavy on my heart this morning. And I'm going to read from verse all the way from 1 through 12, and then I'm going to talk quickly about what I pulled from this. This is a reflection. This is something that we as a church, as a church body, as Christians, can use in our day-to-day -day walk. And I'm not talking about healing people. It has something to do with it. Reading in Mark 2, And again he entered into Capernaum. And after some days, and it was the noise that he was in the house. And straightway many were gathered together, so much that there was no room to receive them. No, not so much as a, about the door. And he preached, and the word unto them. <coughs> and they come unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy. And when they come not, could, and when they could not come high nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was. And when they had brought the head up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. Because of their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, But there were certain of the scribes sitting there, blasphemy. Who can forgive sin but in his spirit that they so reason within themselves? say, Arise, and take up thy bed and walk, but that you may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. He said to the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, Arise, take up thy bed, and go thy way into thine house. And immediately he arose, took the bed, and went forth before them all, and so much that they were all amazed and glorified, God saying, We never saw it on this fashion. <coughs> a story here talking about a man being healed by Jesus. We see healings throughout the Bible. But I found more to this story about us as a church in here than I did about the healing. And where I'm going to start with this is, is the four men in verse 3. Now you can see this. You can imagine, imagine this. And here's, the, here's the room where Jesus is at. It is full. I've described before on, a, on a, an occasion the typical house in the Middle East in this part of the country. It's not like you go to your home and envision. They are completely different. Modern day, they're about probably very similar. But in the older, what this biblical time we're talking about, most homes probably had two rooms. Maybe three at the most. Living rooms served as 
bedrooms and everything else. And then you had a, probably a food preparation area, and that was about it. Sanitation-wise, I don't know. There may have been a small area for that, but that is a typical home. <clears throat> All are pressed in. These four men, probably brothers, because they say which were born of four. So that means they were probably all born together, indicating that they were brothers. Not knowing that this one is sick, that has palsy, which I had to look up. I was not sure what palsy was. That is a, a disease that causes people to tremor. I mean, as in probably epileptic style of seizures. Their whole body sometimes, whether it's not just a hand or an arm, it could be their legs, their whole body. Sometimes it is a paralysis where they cannot move. All they can do is lay there. These four people here have as much to play, have, have as much to do with this part of the story, this section right here, as anything else. Jesus is the, the focal point of it, but these four gentlemen, <coughs> Jesus would not have possibly crossed this path with this man had not these four come together to do something for him. These four had a conviction. These four, I see it as the church today. I see it as our church. We should have a conviction. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters in Christ, we should have a conviction. And our conviction should be to know that this poor person that's outside of these doors right now, that is not sitting in church with us today, they're going to die. Just like you and I. You and I, one day we'll lay down in our beds, we will die. We will close our eyes and never wake up. But we know for something, for certain, I know for certain, when I do what, when I do what open my eyes, I'll be in heaven. I'll be standing beside Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Do you know that? How many outside these doors right now do not know that? How many of us have a conviction for them? <coughs> do we have a conviction for the lost out there? Does it burden our heart? Does it make us weep when we think about it? Does it make us feel guilty? Why do we, what did I do? What did Jeff Rose ever do to deserve heaven? I've done nothing, I can tell you. I would probably shock many of you if I was to tell you my family, my history. But thank God, sometime or another, somebody found I had two great grandmothers that prayed for me on a daily basis from the time I was 18 until I was 25 years of age when I got saved. Prayer works, people. Trust me, I'm, I'm standing living proof today. Prayer works. It took me going to Germany, a country where I could not understand the language. The young lady right here can speak very good I'm fluently, I'm sure. I can get about as far as Sprechen Sie Deutsch, the gates as Eden, and I won't go into the words of the other words that I learned over there before I was saved. But it took me leaving my country where I can speak like I do right now, and everyone sitting here understanding me. Going to a country where I walked down the street and I didn't know what they were talking about. If they were talking about me, they were talking about the car, the dog, or what. But I got saved in Germany. Lisa got saved in Germany. Praise God for missionaries. What's our conviction? Do we have a convicted heart for those that are going to die? Ask yourself that. It is tough. It's rough. You don't know what these people have said. You don't know what those people have done. Yes, I do. I did it. You did it. Not a one of us in here didn't do it. Well, I was a good person before I said, that's nice. Guess what? Nice people go to hell too. If you ain't got Jesus in your life, that's your destination. I hate to tell you, unfortunately, incredibly, this book says so, not Jeff Rose. They also knew that Christ was the answer. How did they know that? Look at what they had to do. <clears throat> they had to take someone, pick someone up, could, could not move themselves from where they were at. Carry them to this location. doesn't say how far, how close, but they had to carry them. If you've ever tried to carry someone that is basically dead weight, they're not the lightest thing in the world. Trust me, my 300-pound body right here, some of you can try to come up here and pick it up if I go limp. 